So for the audience, um, my name is Matteo Kries, director of the Vitra Design Museum. And today as part of our Instagram live talk series, we have the pleasure to speak with Konstantin Gritschic, designer from Berlin. So good to see you. So we didn't see each other for quite a while. No, that's true. <laughs> so how have the last weeks been for you, Konstantin? Um, well, good um, in some ways and, and very different to normal, um, as for all of, all, of, all of us, all the audience. Um, yeah, I guess we all have to um, kind of um, find our own way of um, coping with the, 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 this big change that uh, is caused by the, by the pandemic and, and, mm -hmm. and what it means to our lives. I think everyone has their own story and therefore has to find their own ways. Um, mm -hmm. So what's, what's your story? Um, have you continued to work in the office or you, you started to work from home? How did you organize your, your studio in that time? Well, I think we were quite quick to um, kind of um, to close the office and, and so I, I sent people uh, to their homes, uh, my assistants to work from their home offices. Hmm. Um, they've just come back now um, okay. since about 10 days. Um, we are back, not complete, but almost, uh, and that feels good. Mm. Um, the time of uh, working in remote mode, it did work. I think it was a, a good uh, kind of experience for everyone. But at the same time, I have to say that um, for the, the real creative process uh, that forms you know, so much part of what we do here, mm. um, it does, I, well, I, I, I feel I need to have everyone around. I, I feel we need to share this space. Uh, I'm in the office mm -hmm. now. Um, um, share the space where um, not only we, we come together, but there's, it's where the tools are, where you know, all, all the things are that, that uh, we need for the, uh, the kind of the, the typical process of working. Mm -hmm. So it's been, it's been, it's been good. Um, I, I'm, I'm glad that people are back now and it was just on the verge of becoming a little bit frustrating, but, um, otherwise, you know, we, I guess, you know, I'm, we, we are based in Berlin. We live in a country where, um, the crisis has turned out. Okay. It seems kind of under control. We have a government that we can, pretty much trust in, um, that is transparent. I, I think that helps a lot, uh, psychologically, also in, in, you know, in practice. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've, I've been thinking sometimes in the last weeks about an exhibition we made in 2014 um, called mm -hmm. Panorama. You know, that initially we approached this exhibition with the idea to do something about the future and we did a lot of research about possible scenarios for the next decades. I think the exhibition was also for a certain while called Future Perfect. And then it was called, I don't know, 2025, I think. So I think, you know, it, the idea was to do something inspired by science fiction and to address the question, how can designers actually pretend to look into the future? And what I experienced in the last weeks pretty much reminded me of some of the scenarios we, we discussed. So I remember this quote by William Gibson, no, who, who said that um, we don't need to look into the future because the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. And I think you mentioned that very often when you were asked for your own approach to future issues. Can, mm. can you explain a little bit what, what was your interest in that exhibition? So why were you interested in trying to uh, speak about the future in that exhibition? Well, um, th th this exhibition was an exhibition about my own work. And uh, mm. since I was so involved uh, together with you and, and the museum, but I, I was uh, so involved, uh, I just wanted to set myself a project uh, and a challenging project, a project that was kind of outside of everything that I normally do. And, and therefore the future seemed um, kind of um, interesting, tempting. Um, interesting that you bring it up now in, 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 in these times. I, I think that um, 
uh, now we we live through a kind of you know a, a future scenario that has been a future scenario but suddenly became a reality and now mm. you know the reality is somehow yes it matches facts and information knowledge um that we could have had 10 years ago mm. um but again at the same time the, the, the reality is so different uh, and i think if i remember our project back then uh, as much as it was kind of fascinating and tempting and and inspiring to think about the future thinking about um developing these kind of some future scenarios it was always um kind of um how should i say i don't want to say frustrating but there was there was some kind of there was a block maybe the, a block inside me a, a kind of blocking of of something and and probably it was missing the the reality that kind of um real life um kind of feedback um so it's it's one thing um imagining future and and um uh, thinking in in such scenarios and and uh, but the other thing is and I, i think as designers we always everything we do is kind of has a perspective or mm. projection into a future um but uh, normally that projection is is very much based on reality on our um experience of now um and i think i was missing that in in our project which was trying to project 10 years ahead and i i, I realized it's just i was i was lacking a feedback um also knowledge of course um uh resources all sorts of things so <laughs> right now yes I, i i think you're right we are, we're living through some of what we were discussing at the time but you know i guess none of us would have thought that so soon we'd actually be hit by this future as a reality yeah well i think one reason also for doing the exhibition that way was um or one reason that i gave myself as an explanation was that many of your designs your objects look somehow if they were uh pulled from a from a science fiction movie they have something which is not only in our time but is also anticipating something that we might give us a glimpse about the future if i think about the chair one for example that you uh, designed i think the, at the time when it came out it it really looked as something you had maybe only seen in in films but not in in design so is would you say that science fiction in general maybe also in the in in fiction you know not in as anticipating reality but really as a narrative is something that informs your designs no, no? <laughs> not okay. so much um i i well i i think i that's not what i i'm thinking about what i'm concerned mm -hmm. about um when 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 i work on on these projects um i i think what uh, you know what what sometimes happens is that uh, things that we um that we we launch we bring out um take time to be received by mm. the public by the audience the explanation i have for that is that um before we launch it we myself my team the 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 producer um we spend so much time with these things that gradually we can make you know these we can we can adjust to seeing something that for someone who sees it just um you know in an instant once it comes out mm. maybe kind of um uh, surprised or irritated but our process is different i'm so i'm that something like chair one that you mentioned the process of i think in the end it was almost four years of working on it the mm. the the real creative process maybe was half a year to create that that thing which near enough looked like the chair but half a year of almost working on it every day meant we could very um gradually adjust to 
this thing that we were creating and it just seemed right. We didn't want to, it wasn't the intention to create something from out of space, mm -hmm. uh, not, not even to provoke anyone or to irritate anyone. It was, it just felt we could make these steps um, that as, you know, in, in, in a rational way. We go this way, we, we may, you know, go the next step and so on. And the thing just became what it became. Um, so I, I think that's, that's I guess, the, the explanation I, I would give for, you know, to myself for, um, for the objects that we create. Of course, I'm in, interested in, in um, questioning the things. Why are the things the way they are? Why, are, why do we get accustomed to certain mm -hmm to the, you know, certain typologies, the look of something and so on, Could, couldn't that be changed? Um, and um, I'm, I'm, you know, because we are professionals, we are dealing with these, you know, this um, little, you know, this kind of range of objects, whether it's chairs or products, uh, you know, in, in such an intense way daily for so many years. I think we just simply have an, advan uh, an advantage um, and that advantage is also time. Uh, we've seen things for so much longer than, than the public when, when they just see it the first time. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe, maybe this idea of uh, associating it to the future or to science fiction is also related to the fact that it comes from a lot of technological research that you do, right? For example, mm -hmm. Chair One, was using aluminium, uh, um, I think it was, what, what kind of aluminium technology was it? It was... Um, it's die casting. Die casting, um, yes. Die casting. I'm told that the form of that shell basically came out of what the die cast uh, requires, right? Yes. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm of a generation that um, <laughs> when, 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 you know, when, when I, when, certainly when I was a student and, and becoming interested in design industry, for me, that was the, that was the, um, the prophecy. That was the, that was where I wanted to work because I, and I, I had, the industry was not an enemy. It was the, it was someone I wanted to partner with because the industry had technology and mm -hmm. factories they and know how and um and uh, they, you know they could bring in a team of people all of these things i i uh, you know i, I very much i my i guess as a, as a designer i'm mm. uh, that informed who i am as a designer and it still is uh, now uh, you know this is something like um, what is it 30 years uh, since i graduated so in in the last 30 years a lot of things happened and There are good reasons why the young generation is much more critical towards industry. Um, but I, I still see a huge potential there. And, and that potential is, and that was your question, is, is you know, also technology and the, the, this kind of beautiful craft of making things on an, on an industrial scale. Uh, mm. And I think that's still, I would say, still one key um, motivation or inspiration for the work we do the the other one would be the the human being the the, the you know people that will eventually be using the, the things we design because that's um, of course always at the center of, of of design everything we do we do every object we design we design for people to mm. to use these things um and uh, and that that connection that interaction between the human And, and the object is, is of course, the other uh, major um, kind of uh, issue or, or consideration in the process. Mm. It's interesting that you mentioned this interaction of, of the users and, and your objects, because I remember that you once said when we spoke about what is beautiful for you, that you said, you know, you're, you're not aiming for a, a, a beauty which is, You know the, the typical stereotype of of a nice form, but for you, it's more interesting to create an object that, referring to chair one, that somehow stands in your way, that gives a resistance, and that from that resistance you, you create another relation to the object, um, 
and you remember it, uh, it, it, it stays in your mind probably longer and better than just something that you consume visually, but you'll forget it, about it uh, very quickly. So what is your idea of, of beauty? Is that something relevant for you or is it something that you're not thinking about when you're creating? It's, it's more about technology. Oh, no, no. It, I, I, you know, beauty is, is so important. Um, like you say, it, it, it may not be a beauty in only the formal sense, but also, I mean, also form is beautiful and that forms part of the beauty of an object. But beauty is also um, um, the, the intelligence of an object, the, the, the rationale, the simplicity, the way it, it, it functions. Uh, all of this is beauty and and psychologically, of course, when I talk about the, the interaction between the user and the object, as a, as a user, I want, to, I want this, this thing, whether I sit on it or I use it, um, I, I think the you know, beauty in, this, in the way I've just tried to describe it makes me feel kind of closer to this thing, uh, makes, me feel, makes me like it. Um, makes me feel comfortable even mm. um what, what you referred to just before i want to just come back to that this this you know uh, the the because it um, it it sounds a little bit aggressive the you know the object that gets in your way um i'm even though i had latin in school i i didn't realize that the 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 kind of the the root of the word object is really that something is thrown in your way so it is you are you are confronted with with it and i, I when i learned it um that was after latin in school uh that just um just seemed so um so such a perfect explanation mm. for me for what i what i like in objects that objects are not just unobtrusive you know, blending into our environment. They are, they are there, they have a presence and they may be in our way and we need to arrange ourselves with them. Mm. But that arrangement can also turn into a real love affair, a real affection, a caring and, and, and so on. So I, I think this is a really, this is a really in, uh, interesting and important aspect of, mm. of, um, of design. I think I think that's also something that you add when you design uh, a very simple object. If you think about the Mayday lamp, for example, which is a rather simple, useful lamp, or, or the just think about the Medici uh, uh, chair. You know, it's it's a it's a typology that we know. It's a wooden chair um, that refers to some previous typologies. But somehow you you change that typology, you in, reinterpret it, and you add, I don't know what it is, elements, ideas, um, materials, which make you see this typology in a different way. You know, the Mayday lamp with, with, a, um, with a little angle to, to fix the lamp, different material or different colors that create these accents. How, how does that process work? If, if you, I, I, I guess you start from also things that you see, you know, that, that are not, not inventing mm -hmm. them, but you see things and you start working with what you already know and then take it further. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's what we talked about before, the, this, the reality. Reality is the, the, the you know, the, the real life, everyday life, even, you know, my own life uh, um, experience with things. That's a, that's a source of, of information. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, and, 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 and therefore creates, usually creates the starting point for, mm. for any project idea. And then how does it work? I, I guess um, I, I feel that um, language um, plays a role in the process um, simply because I, I feel that um, talking about an idea in the early stage is, you know, uh, forces me to be precise in in mm. explaining what it is that I'm I'm you know I have in mind I'm looking for, but without creating an image. I think the image that could be a, a sketch, an early sketch, 
it could get in the way of the process. A word less so. And so probably from, from you know, a simple word, a sentence, um, we, we start mocking things up. Um, a mock-up is, is beautiful because it's, a kind, and, and even the sound of the word is, is like what it is. It's something a little bit dirty, a little bit fast, not precious, just, just making it. Just, so let's see, if we, if we do that, let's see what happens. And um, in a way, the, 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 from a uh, first mock-up is is kind of the is a relief because from there on it, it the, the the whole process could never come to a halt. There's always something to respond to, to change, to take you know to f- take further and so on. And so our process is very um, is very empirical. It's very hands-on. Um, which doesn't mean that we have, a, you know, we, we, we don't have a great workshop facilities. We're not making prototypes. We're not making beautiful little machines. We are making quite rough mock-ups. And, but these mock-ups uh, teach us a lot um, about all sorts of, of about function, proportion, the looks, and, and, and so on. And, and from there, of course, we, we work with the other tools, that, whether it's the computer, uh, still language, reference images, sketches, uh, and so on. Um, let me come back to the Mayday lamp, because you mentioned that. And I, the Mayday lamp is, it was such a, it was kind of um, an important project in my own career, because I, I think it just changed something in, um, it, 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 um, it was a very personal project at the time, but it became successful. So I realized that, you know, the, the, you know from, from a very, you know, sub- subjective point of view and, and, and focus, um, I could actually create something that, you know, other people could also relate to. Um, Mayday Lamb is a perfect example for interaction. And I'd, I'd say I played very simple tricks with Maybe Day because if you put a, something that resembles a handle on anything, people are invited um, to hold it there, to mm. pick it up, to take it somewhere. If you put a hook, people understand, okay, I'll, I, I can hang it somewhere. So I can hang it in a tree. I can hang it over the backrest of my chair and so on. So we... <laughs> Mayday, you know, plays these simple tricks. These tricks are legitimate. They are, uh, and I've, I've, I've used these kind of tricks um, over and over. Um, like I said, a handle is a great thing to put on things when they make sense, but then they are really a, a, a kind of, um, they're like um, a, 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 a signage saying, or a, a manual almost saying, you know, do something with me. And, and I, I enjoy that. And I, I think this is, this is also um, a form of beauty, of course. If that happens, um, the best thing is um, seeing your own products being used by someone somewhere um, anonymously in some kind of way that maybe, you know, is, is just what I always thought uh, mm-hmm. would happen, but also uh, completely the contrary. People just um, take make the thing their own it's interesting that you mentioned this this moment of appropriation that or or surprise that happens when people start to include your designs in their own lives and in this moment of surprise makes me think of the the ready-made when you sometimes what i like about the mayday lamp and also other objects you create is that the the different parts that are coming together are still visible separately so they are not made one but you you show maybe you still have an idea of the initial mock-up sometimes i feel that your objects still look open and not you know polished and finished but you still feel that they come from a research and um you also in the exhibition we had you included um a poster of a duchamp exhibition so I was wondering whether this idea of assembling things, maybe also in a surprising way, comes from there. Is there something that you you looked at 
when you saw the ready-mades by Duchamp? Um, yes, of course. I've, I've, I've been attracted to the work of, of, of <clears throat> Duchamp. Um, however, it's, 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 it's not why I, um, I, I feel, and, and uh, one should probably also mention Castiglioni, who was the, the kind of the designer using ready-mades in, in that kind of very um, uh, direct, visible way. Mm. Um, I think for me, using ready-mades comes from a time in my career when, you know, it was just out of necessity because you had no access to the real manufacturing or, you know, tooling something. So you, um, it was a way of um, just having something made, putting things together, you know, by just going to a hardware shop. And um, I, and I, I I like that a lot. Um, I I think I've in my in my own career I've I've kind of progressed from there. So it it was very honest and truthful, you know, in in these moments when when it was a necessity. Um, now just um, referencing it or playing with this quote, I guess, doesn't interest me that much. Mm -hmm. But you, you, it's it's a it's a design language that is always around or always has, you know, comes back and you always see people, you know, doing it. I, I, I always find it attractive and charming, but um, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's not a, it's not a recipe of doing things. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, but, um, you know, you said um, in, in some of my designs, you can still trace maybe the, the, the elements that I, somehow whether in just in my mind or in mock-up stage we, we did actually put together mm. and I, I think that is true and I, I think it's um, it's it's something that I um, I, I think we, you know we can be very honest about um, the, the references are very important and design is not um, a discipline of inventing things mm. new we always work with the whole the, the, the kind of this archive or the stock of things that that there are, uh, and 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 you know, um, and and using these references um, in 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 a in a kind of in an appropriate way, in a in, it makes makes a lot of sense, and I, I I'm I, I I like to show that. Mm -hmm. um, well, you were speaking about your early career when when this assembling of uh, um, existing materials, uh, objects, parts was out of necessity. Um, you were trained as a carpenter and, and then very early you worked with Jasper Morrison, right? So um, I remember that also Jasper in his early days did these mm. kinds of collages, no? With uh, the flower pot table and the table with a, with a um, bicycle a steering wheel. The handlebar so, table, yeah, yeah. Yes, the, the bar table. So, so is, is that, I mean, and at the same time, you mentioned that you were interested in the promises of industry in your early days, that was where to go. So how, how does that fit together that you were trained as a carpenter, which is not in the industry? Was it a way, uh, a progression from carpentry, lessons from Jasper Morrison, and then discovering industry in the early 90s? Absolutely, it was a progression. I I, um, I wanted to become I wanted to become a boat builder. That didn't work. Then I became a cabinet maker, uh, and that worked. Um, but um, I realized, um, as much as I enjoy making, that wasn't all of what I wanted to do. There was this, you know, there there was the I when you know during the apprenticeship, I realized that the, it was actually the planning the planning of the making that really interested me. And in, in some way you could call that a design process. Uh, but the planning of the making is also, um, you know, thinking about the right tools, uh, machinery also. Mm -hmm. And, and therefore my, my interest in, in, in industry in the kind of serial production batch production comes from, I guess the circular saw from running, running, boards over the circular saw in, in a kind of, you know, still 
by myself, but in an almost automated way. Mm. Um, the, the efficiency of production, which needs a, a thorough planning ahead, uh, that interested me. And I think, you know, Jasper, who he, interestingly, he graduated from the Royal College of Arts in those years when I was a, um, an, doing my apprenticeship uh, as a cabinet maker. So there were in, in the, in the mag, in magazines, there were mm-hmm. his college works, his, his graduation projects, the, the, laundry, uh, the laundry chair, sometimes called the wing nut chair, mm-hmm. um, yeah. the, the handlebar table, the flower pot table and so on. I think Jasper, I, I don't want to speak for him, but I, I feel that also <laughs> his use of ready-mades was part of kind of, was owed to the kind of necessity. So you needed to, you know, it was, you know, it gave you access to material to, to certain parts. But if you, if you look carefully at what he chooses, it's, it is very industrial um, elements. Even the wing nut is a, such a, an industrial uh, product. Um, the, the, the beautiful, the, the racing bike handlebars, Mm-hmm. Uh, including the the clamp that holds the the bars, these are beautifully designed, engineered, industrially made items. And I, I think probably you know I, I, I think we 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 were that's what we loved, and and we knew that one day we we would actually be able to design these things ourselves. But for the time being, we had to go to the hardware shop and 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 buy them uh, and integrate them in the work. Nice, nice explanation for, for these, um, these pieces. Um, I mean, when we look at, back at your early career uh, still, Constantine, um, I think your, your mother was an art dealer, right? And your sister is, is, a, is, a, is an artist. Um, mm-hmm. So w- what influence did, did art have on your work? I mean, when we collaborated on, on the exhibition in 2014, I remember I was so impressed by your knowledge about contemporary art. I mean, you, you, you're looking at exhibitions, artists, you, you're very informed about that. How does that uh, inform your work? I'm sure there is a relation, but I, I would lack the words how the relation is actually. Uh, well, um, I mean, the, the first relationship is that simply I, I grew up in, um, you know, in, in, in a house, uh, in, in, in a family that, that was interested in art. And my mother in, in contemporary art, my father, who was older than my mother, in 18th century drawings. Uh, or, um, so we, um, my sister and I, we, we were brought up with this. Every travel, um, you know, mm-hmm. meant going to museums, to churches. Um, you said my, my sister is an artist, um, so it shows we both, um, it, it, was, it was something we, in a way, we both enjoyed. We, it, 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 it meant something, mm-hmm. even, you know, at, at, you know when, we were, when we were children or teenagers. Um, the, the most kind of vivid and, and, and strong experience uh, or memory I have was... Um, um, visiting artists, contemporary artists in their studios with my mother. Um, and and the, the, the picture that, that kind of got stuck in my mind was the, 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 the beauty of these studios, um, the spaces, that, spaces of creation. That's, you know, an artist studio is it's always amazing. There's, mm-hmm. there's the artworks, but there's all the, the tools, the, the mess, the, the books, some furniture, whatever, and you also traces of 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 life of the life of the artist, and 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 I, I think that most significantly, I realize that how privileged an artist is um, finding a way to make work and life one. So mm. there was no separation between the two, and that really. Um, that, that really, um, it was a discovery, um, w- without even knowing the implications, but it, I, 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 I kept, uh, I, th- I think it, it, uh, it traveled with me. Yeah. Uh, and, and nowadays I can say I'm almost, I'm almost there that, you know, the, 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 the work I do is 
also part of my life. But I'm not an artist. Um, uh, art has, has always, you know, s- s- stayed with me as an influence, as, a, as an interest, um, but clearly as something that I'm not. I, I, and I don't even, you know, um, I, 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 I don't even try, you know, being on that side, I, I think an artist um, is uh, is a is a uh, artist and and designer, especially industrial designer. What I call myself is a, is a different um, it's a different discipline or a different um, well, a whole different life, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but still, I think maybe you wouldn't agree. But I, I think there are elements or uh, an attitude maybe that may. Um, may come from art and and also influence your attitude as a designer. If I think I wouldn't consider you, for example, as a typical designer who is just a service provider who gives the commissioner what he wants, but but you take it a step further and you go deeper, maybe also deeper in your research than your your client would require. But you, you know, it's it's your own it's your own uh, interest in in developing things that um, that are new and maybe not repeating just doing another chair doing another lamp mm. but making a chair or a lamp that is so different that it has its own uh, cause of being would you would you agree to that at least yeah no no, no absolutely <laughs> uh, um, I, I think um, the, the, the uh, authorship is is, is a you know the key to um the uh, that, that's probably the connection um hmm. you, you know an, a, an artist is an author um and uh, i i would always see myself as a designer being an author having an authorship on on the the work i do i do work um you know in in a, in a commercial context but i i still feel i in order to be good i need to make this project my own um, um and um, and I, I guess that's that's the the form of authorship we're talking about and another aspect i, I think uh, an artist doesn't uh, i i you'd, you'd always look at at an artist's um body of work as mm. as as one thing it's right. it's a career of work it's 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 you know starting somewhere and developing it could be you know some artists work on the on the same theme over and over and that's that has an incredible strength and 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 beauty and other artists over the course of their career and life uh, would kind of change tap into very different things but there's always there's it it is this the the meta project the 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 bigger project of the the you know not only the singular artwork but but the one thing leading to the other, to the other, and, and so on. And, and I, I feel that's how I, that's how I, I feel how I work also. I feel that in the end, projects are all related one to the other, all very, even very, um, very different things. Um, and, and there is, I, I couldn't, D- define that meta project what what is it i'm looking for i couldn't i couldn't define that but, but probably you know because i'm 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 on that journey i'm i'm still looking for that but it is there is a journey um the the the, the career um so far and for the next however many years will be a journey of you know um following certain interests my own interests in of course in 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 collaboration in 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 relationship to my clients that play a big role an artist doesn't have clients yeah. um, we we do and the clients play a very very important role in fact um, it, it, i think an interesting example for that is the you know the waiver chair you designed for vitra and then the mm-hmm. recent um lounge chair the i think it's called citizen yeah. uh, where i see a relation between both with this um, bearings, the struct, metal structure, and then you have these elements that are just seem to hang into the, hung into the structure. So there I see an, an evolution, you know, a, a connection between both, but you clearly see that 
what still looks very much like a mock-up in the waiver becomes more refined in the next step. So would that be a, this kind of evolution that connects different projects of yours? Um, that, that's, a, that's a good example. It's, it's an example where um, that, that kind of where, you know, from one, from the, the, the original product, waiver to citizen, uh, we stay in the same company. Um, mm -hmm. um, uh, and I think that's, that's very, uh, very beautiful. Uh, and I, I, I feel design... Um, uh, it, in, in, in my um, kind of field of furniture design doesn't quite do that enough to revisit projects and just rethink them, tweak them or radically change them after so many years of practical use. Uh, Waver was a, was, um, a, a project we did and I don't even remember how many years ago. So my first um, <laughs> product uh, for for Vitra, um, something that I, I strongly believed in at the time. And had, there's an idea about, um, you know, the whole s construction of the chair of suspending the seat um, from a frame. So mm -hmm. what you sit in is not supported, it is suspended. And that idea always seemed so interesting. Uh, and maybe at the time we, well, no, naturally at you know while you work on it you 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 find one kind of solution or the the, the process leads to one kind of solution even mm -hmm. though you could always carry on and carry on and carry on but um so we we just made it into this chair called waiver which worked and it was fine but i guess it was very much um it 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 was an outdoor chair it was rather big um also maybe a little bit too heavy um it well I, we can clearly say it didn't work on a commercial level um but it was um i have to give the credit to vitra um and in particular eckhard meiser the the uh, former product developer at vitra who kept on talking about waiver the i the, the principal idea of that mm -hmm. chair and wouldn't it be nice to just rethink that and, and, and maybe find another kind of um, another angle to it? And, and the other angle then became, okay, we take it from the outdoor into the indoor, but then, then it became a lounge chair. Um, mm -hmm. Lounge chairs. It has the most famous lounge chair in the world, the, the, the Eames lounge chair. And, so we brought it in, indoors, and, 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 but, and then so the, the project became much more challenging in a way, more serious, because it, it then uh, became, you know, the, 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 the project became a lounge chair uh, with all its kind of the, 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 the its references uh, and so on. And um, it, we, the, the principle of what we wanted to do was so clear, but uh, finding the right... Um, the right, the, finding the solutions was mm. was rather difficult, but I, I'd say um, in the end very um, very successful. We we the, the the new chair still has works on the on the on that principle of a suspended seat, yes. but how we suspend the seat is completely different to <laughs> what it was before. Um, quite radical, I think, in terms of um, the technology we use, because it's it's in in one sense <clears throat> rather primitive. We're using hmm. steel cable, quite a thick steel cable. So the, the the steel cable, the thickness of the steel cable, is not thick because of the weight. To you know, hmm. Hmm. but it is thick in order to give a certain stiffness um, uh, in order to control the movement we didn't want you know the people to just swim in the chair but have some kind of resistance and the the, the steel cable is like a spring um a tension wire <coughs> it's it, it's it, it's actually it was a discovery we made uh, during the process um there was no and and that's the kind of brings brings us back to what we said before this mock-up making trying things out it's this is you know, this solution you cannot sketch, you cannot even think, you, you, well, you can 
you can think, oh, let's try that, but um, not knowing if, if that would lead anywhere and how it would actually work. And um, it's, it's a good example for how we... Um, we, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, that, that is one of the small evolutions from the, the waiver to the citizen chair. But uh, let's also speak about the, you know, the, the bigger evolution in your, in your work. Um, you know, in the last 20 years, you, you got very famous internationally as a designer of furniture, uh, lamps, a lot of objects related to the interior. But in the past years, you also started to do projects which are rather different from that. You know, you, you designed this mobile disco with, with smart, you designed a yacht, you, you I think you also worked with Brioni on some, uh, some uh, fashion or clothing designs. So. Are you, are you afraid of getting caught in, in one field of design? And, and are you interested in, you know, in, in the next 10 or 20 years of your work in working more on other fields? Or how would you look at this bigger evolution in your work? Where are you going to now? I'm, well, I've, I've always been interested in, 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 in being able to do a variety of things. Um, Having said that, I, I also know that my, my biggest passion and love is furniture. So I, I've, I know that I would always uh, enjoy designing furniture. But in order to um, sustain this love affair, I feel I need to break out of it uh, and, 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 and bring kind of things back from 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 those travels um uh, sort of um I, I you know not to say that all the other things are i i, I do in order to kind of <laughs> uh, to 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 feed this back into furniture design i i, I do really enjoy uh, working on other scales and different mm -hmm. um uh, media and 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 and, and fields but um I think the the one constant there will be in my career is is the furniture. But uh, in order to to keep that a, a constant that feels good, I I want to <laughs> do other things. Um, and and some of those you mentioned um, that's still you know designing products or objects, physical things, um, but also. Um, designing exhibitions uh, um, has become that has actually become the, the the second important kind of column of the office yeah. and and that's a, I, I feel that is um, it's still a design process sometimes it's it, it relates to my experience as a as an industrial designer but in many other ways it's actually a, a, a very different uh, discipline and and that's something I I'm, I'm finding not only challenging but very enjoyable um, mm -hmm. And some ex exhibitions have played an important role, I think, in also establishing your career, right? There was an early exhibition at Haus der Kunst, I think, was it with Chris Derkon when he was director at Haus der Kunst in Munich? And then there was the one at the Serpentine. Actually, I'd, I'd say that um, sort of, um, we, we talked about my, my, my childhood and upbringing. My, my mother ha had a, a gallery of contemporary art and setting up, up exhibitions w was also a natural thing that kind of happened in every so-and-so month. And, and my sister and I, we were involved in this or setting up um, the, you know, the, the booth at, the, at, a, at an art fair. Then so many years later, it was um, Hans-Jörg Meyer Eichen from, from Authentics um, one of my early clients in the early years of my career mm -hmm. who just gave me that opportunity or he, he encouraged me and he trusted um, me to design exhibitions for authentics. The first ones were in, um, in Paris, uh, then Milan several years on, on, on some um, uh, years. Um, and, um, that was a real a, a kind of discovery of just this uh, this um, discipline of um, mm -hmm. uh, exhibition making. Um, it's an you know it's it has to be you know it's usually for a, a limited amount of time. It's ephemeral. It is public. Uh, it has to entertain, inform, 
educate, um, draw people in, but also um, reach people that that may only have two minutes <laughs> to to. Uh, so it's, it's it it works on on many levels, and and you know things that we, we we've talked about before the, the the psychology of of an object or the interaction between humans and objects. You find that in on, in another way in exhibitions, and I, I'm finding that extremely um, um, kind of it, it it's 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 not easy but um that that's what why i'm i'm interested in it it's yeah. uh, um i think you know when we, we collaborated on on the second exhibition about club culture right <clears throat> the night mm -hmm. fever exhibition and there i felt that you were able as a as the exhibition designer to really add something to the exhibition which was designing an experience and an interaction in in one space uh, so you you fought really hard to get one of the exhibition spaces just for a for a free installation which was not part of the curatorial content mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it became part of the narrative and of the choreography of the exhibition where just, people were just able to listen to dance music from different decades and you created a kind of dance floor where, where they could move in space i think that was a a, a brilliant idea scenographically um, but again I think it was so typical for your interest in, in not just giving a form but uh, thinking about the psychology of, of the user right yeah um, the, 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 this um, this particular show was um, was um, kind of um, it was challenging because um, it uh, talked about club culture that means about an experience that you cannot rebuild no, certainly not in a museum mm -hmm. so we had to 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 evoke um, um an atmosphere um bring back people's own memories but also you know for younger generations to draw them into um, you know clubs of the 60s or 70s that they would have never you know that they 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 never experienced themselves and uh, it was a really you know i even though we we had a, a beautiful um, material to work with exhibits uh, it it i think it, it really really uh, it was the role of the scenography to create this um this um um, this atmosphere and to, sure. to to animate people and 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 one of the you know one of the um, I remember very well the, the meeting we had where it was so clear that we I, we all agreed on the fact that there is no music in this show we can't have the kind of uh, elevator uh, level or supermarket level music in the background uh, mm -hmm. either the music is loud like in a club or there's no music. So the only way to play loud music was in this kind of um, special um, box. box and space and and um, via headphones. But headphones is not club. <laughs> club means uh, you are not on your own, but with other people, and you're sharing things. So it the it's very difficult to explain this now to people that may have not seen this. But in the end, the, that particular space worked as it, it became a dance floor, um, a collective place uh, where people shared music. And and uh, e even in the museum, we, we you know we um, we could witness it. They they would just start to dance and and enjoy themselves. Um, and and that was uh, that was very successful then. Um, so it's now in the Design Museum Denmark. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so we hope we can, or, or you as the audience can go and see it really uh, soon. I think it's closed now still, but, but um, mm. probably open, reopening soon. Constantine, shall we take some questions of the, of the audience? Um, if yeah. there are any, yeah. Well, I just <laughs> checked that. So there's one question uh, by Space Cake Architects. Uh, can you give us some insight in your specific design process? How, how does that work? Well, I, I think we talked about it a little bit. Um, the, so um, where do ideas come from? They come from observation, they come from reality, they come from knowledge of 
in material and processes. And then uh, we work, um, you know, the, then the, the process um, takes certain steps. And, and I, I, I said the, the, the relief moment is the first mock-up when you can physically build something, even the most fragile, uh, unfinished, um, <laughs> dysfunctional thing. And, and from there on, you basically, you, 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 you keep on um, working on whatever that is. And that thing uh, in, in, you know, uh, repeating mm -hmm. and iter iterations of, of, of models and, 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 and trials, we, we don't do um, everything here in the studio. I said we, we are uh, equipped with a workshop, but that's not for, um, you know, not on, on that kind of sophisticated level. Uh, I feel that at a certain moment, it's very important to bring in the client. And, and that's maybe something I, I need to say clearly. What we do, we do for clients. We don't work into the blue um, so uh, there is a client and we, we, we bring the client into the process at uh, an early stage. I'm, I'm finding that really important that the, 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 uh, a, 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 a big part of the, of the development of the project, um, and that includes, includes everything, the, the technological, functional, uh, formal, uh, a lot of that development is shared with the, with the client. Um, mm -hmm. And what, what role does uh, sustainability play in that process? Has it become something that gets more, I suppose, it gets more and more important in the process with, with your clients? Um, how are you dealing with that? It is, it is important and it has always been important. And the fact that we, we work with clients, that is real people, um, factories that we visit, um, we, 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 see, we, we see the whole you know, the, the, the entire operation, uh, I have a picture of that entire operation. So I think um, as designers, we would very, um, you know, we would clearly react to, you know, um, processes or situations, circumstances that, mm -hmm. that don't, um, um, that don't meet the, you know, the, a certain standard of sustainability uh, sustainability is is of course it's 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 many many things and it depends very much on a specific project for who where is this company based what are they doing um, what is the product where will it go and and so on so i i'm i'd, I'd rather not give a, a kind of a generalization about you know <laughs> there's no recipe for you know working in 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 a, in a positively sustainable way but i th i think um the the process process which is very close to um to to, to the, the 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 whole operation um gives us an awareness and therefore also control over over the um you know over this process and 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 we we can we we can i mean even the you know de designing things in a, in a, in a sort of simple way um produces a product that is um can be well made uh, and last a long time it can probably likely be repaired if it breaks all of those things anyway are the most you know the the sustainability in the, in the in the best sense yeah yeah and we do think of it uh, but it's not the you know this is not the big um I, this is this is not the is not the the, the only issue mm, um, yeah um well one one of our guests is asking what book are you reading at the moment are you reading one? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I'm I, I'm falling uh, I'm falling asleep at ten o'clock at night. We have two small kids, and we we basically we I don't get to do it. Okay, that was a short answer. Any, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I know that situation, Constantine. Uh, yeah. Another question: um, uh, As a young designer, someone is asking, how can I approach industry? I think it's a very common question that you maybe ask very often, and I think a very important question for many young designers. What would you suggest? 
I, I, I like the question because I, I think this is, uh, you know, this shows that someone wants to approach industry uh, uh, or a client um, uh, and, and not just do everything by themselves, which the, the, that model exists now. And I, I think it's, um, it exists because there is the, the, you, the, you have the tools and I, I think there are very interesting things happening that way. But I, I always like, you know, the, I, I see a great potential in the collaboration with the client. The but industry. also, so, scale, no? I mean, you can work on a different scale of this. On a different, yes, yes, there is. Um, how do you approach them? Um, how did you do that? Well, in a way, I. I, I, I never did, and, and then that sounds um, that sounds boring because it it sounds either privileged or <laughs> um, you know from from the old times back then it was also different. Um, I, I think you know um, the, uh, my first kind of client company producing my first objects came to my degree show, and uh, that was the company that produced. Jasper Morrison's work at the time. So Jasper probably made some kind of introduction. And then mm -hmm. from there, it went to other companies that saw what I had done with this company. And, and so basically one thing leads to the other and, and it's still um, very much like that today. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, that's not much help to someone who says, I'm, I live in, in a country where there is no industry or even there is no um, Jasper Morrison to help me, how can I do it? Um, I think, um, well, uh, today's other th today, other than 30 years ago, when, when we started, there's the internet, I, I guess the internet is, 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 is a, a great and very democratic platform to, mm. to uh, submit work and to show work. Um, don't, um, you know, it's it's you know it is a platform and it is helpful, but it's not reality. So something that is big in the internet is not still is not yet a product. Um, uh, but it's um, it's very it's very difficult to answer that question in 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 the right kind of way. Also, you know, who's asking the question and 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 uh, yeah. where in their career are they? Well, maybe he well, or her can get in touch with you through Instagram. So maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe you can yeah. give them some more insights. So there, there's yeah, an interesting yeah. question, um, uh, which is, uh, do you think that Asia will make a contribution to the design narrative in the near future? Seeing that at the moment, the, the design discourse is very much centered on Europe. Um, so what do you think about that? I think it's, it's a super interesting question. Yeah, I, I I definitely think Asia will may have a, a a big you know play a big role and, and make a big uh, impact on on the the future of design. I you know the, the the best explanation I could give is look at the architecture. I think architecture from you know in in Asia from Asian practices is it's so fascinating, mind blowing. A lot of it. Um, and um, and and has found its own voice has has um, really found its own its own expression and methods and uh, i'm i'm pretty sure that will happen in the in in the kind of product design world uh, as well um, the industry is there the technology is there culture is there of course these you know asia has uh, incredible culture and traditions. Uh, um, so, you know, and very good schools um, as well. Um, so I, I think it's, it's a matter of time, but nothing we should be afraid of. It's, I, I think it, I, you know, I look forward to seeing what comes from there. You can only add to the quality of, uh, of, of, of design of the design discourse and, and so on. So yes, um, bring it on. <laughs> so maybe one last question, Constantine, that may close the, the circle to the beginning when we started, of course, with the current situation, with the pandemic. And someone is asking uh, whether the COVID uh, pandemic has changed your personal view on design and on your way of working. 
And if you think, and, and that may sound a little blasphemic uh, after everything that we heard, uh, do you think uh, industrial design will become less important in the future? Well, let's start with that la last part of the question because no, I think I think design is really you know design is um, is is maybe let's add just precise in Constantina. What I think is implied in that question is that you know at the moment there's so much debate about social design about other fields of design which are less connected to industry, right? And um, so in in the debates about design, this is very dominant still there's a lot of designers like you who work with the industry in industry and so it's interesting to hear from you what, what, what do you think about the future of that discipline i, th I think it will also stay Im Im important and relevant um, and it's it's not that you know the two systems are fighting each other and one is good and the other bad or the one is old-fashioned the other one is the future i think they will live alongside and even uh, you know connect um i think um it there will be um the, the, you know the, there will be uh, uh, work for for uh, you know in in the kind of uh, for products for 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 you know the, the type we we talked about before that you know in the end um uh, we, we you know products that are um well so well developed therefore can be produced in a, in a good way sustainable smart efficient therefore they are affordable therefore they last therefore they can be either repaired or have an afterlife all of this is mm. is it still matters therefore it's not you know so um <laughs> No, by no means is, is, is my discipline a dying discipline, but um, design, uh, and that's a good thing, that the, 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 what the, the meaning of the word design has become so much bigger than, um, I guess, when, when, you know, when I was a student, it was the end of the 80s, and design was the kind of... Um, Making an object, no, it was making well, a... making an object, but it was it was kind of describing everything that was wrong in a way. It was because it was making an object that was loud and that was dec, you know, um, just um... <laughs> styling. There was the word styling at the time, right? <laughs> styling, whatever. Um, you know, there, there were so many practices that that you know were design practices, but deliberately they took that des that word design out of them. Doesn't matter anymore now. Now today, design is is the the, the word has has kind of been given a lot more meaning again, and it's even you know meaning in you know expanding the you know the scope of what a designer does. But also, we hear politicians talk about the design of a of an action plan, or I don't know, you know all these things. I, I think design is right now and we should you know be be feel very positive and optimistic about this design has become an idea of something that that you know has has quality is is very precious to society to our life uh, and uh, in whatever form it it, uh, it takes hmm. i think that's a wonderful uh, word to end the discussion <laughs> concept <laughs> That's a very positive outlook. And I yeah, think uh, yeah. it's also some, something that we experience now in the pandemic, right? That there's a lot of designers thinking about solutions, what they can add to the situation. So again, yeah. it be that there is this bigger scope of design. Mm. Thank you so much, Konstantin. Was a, Thanks, Matteo. Yes, was Mateo. a very nice conversation with yeah, the different aspects you. of your work.